Hey team, and welcome back. We last left you in Arrowtown. We had booked tickets to see the Red Hot Chili Peppers play in the city of Dunedin, and had five days to get there, which meant the time has come to explore the city of Invercargill and the amazing coastal scenery between Invercargill and Dunedin. Along the way, we found some gorgeous beaches, epic views, and learned about a few local legends. Here's what happened. We are in the outskirts of Invercargill and the rain has stopped. In fact, it barely looks like it's rained here. It, it looks pretty dry. I don't know what was going on before, um, but it's only like, what, 2.30? Three o'clock, three o'clock. So we are gonna go into town for a little walk and then we're gonna go to our campsite, which is just a few kilometers away. And I think have a nice chilled afternoon. Good morning from Oresi Beach. We're only about 10 kilometers out of Invercargill, but this is one of the most southern beaches in the world. It's probably the most southern I'll ever run. And as you can see, I have the entire thing to myself. There is not another living soul as far as I can see. In the distance over there, you can see the silhouette of Stewart Island. That's the third island of New Zealand. And we did want to go, but uh, it's $400 return on the ferry before you've actually done anything. Um, so that one might have to wait until hopefully we come back one day. But this is gorgeous. This beach is used in a days gone by as a drag racing strip for people who were trying to test the speed of their vehicles. And by one guy called Bert Monroe, who I'm going to return to later today, but I just want you to imagine a gentleman called Bert Monroe with his 1920s Indian motorcycle lining up somewhere on this beach to see how fast he could get down it. See you in a bit. Welcome to Transport World, which I'm hoping is cooler than it sounds. Should be a laugh. I hope that when I die, someone will be interested enough to carry it on. Bill Richardson. Transport World is the largest private automotive museum of its type in the world. It's the legacy of Bill Richardson, a motoring fanatic, who began his amazing collection in 1967, when he spent £5 on a 1933 International D1 truck. When Bill died in 2005, his daughter picked up his legacy, and in 2015, Transport World was opened in Invercargill. Today, it houses more than 300 classic vehicles, all of which have been brilliantly restored and preserved in a series of amazing exhibitions. This is a 1907 Ford Model K cost two and a half thousand dollars at the time which would be about eighty nine thousand dollars today it's absolutely bloody gorgeous this you'd sleep in the back of there quite happily i mean it's huge it's it's well bigger than a large range rover but it's really lovely there are eight of them that are known to have been restored in the world we have found some camper vans. The first Volkswagen combis were made in 1949. Oh, it's beautiful. Hi, Laura. My personal little favourite is this one down the end here. Look at these, they're so iconic. Look at this. I love the colour on it. I mean, the orange checkered interior leaves something to be desired, but it's gorgeous. And the roof comes up to give you space to stand. Very, very cool place. And I don't think you actually have to be a big car fanatic to come and enjoy this. This is, this is just interesting and fun. Really well done. A couple of minutes drive from Transport World is a hardware shop. E. Hayes and Sons, which is home to an iconic piece of local history immortalised by Anthony Hopkins in the brilliant 2005 movie 
the world's fastest Indian. So this is a 1920s Indian Scout motorcycle. Bert Munro, who was a gentleman who lived here in Cargill, uh, bought this for £120 in 1920. At that time it had a top speed of about 60 miles an hour. He spent years and years modifying it and ultimately he took it uh, to Utah, to the salt flats at Bonneville. Uh, and on the 26th of August 1967, uh, he managed to get the thing up to 184 miles an hour. Um, essentially by placing it, or what was left of it, inside something like this. This is a replica that was built uh, for the movie. Uh, 2004 movie, The World's Fastest Indian with Anthony Hopkins. Uh, we watched it last night and it's absolutely fabulous. I really would, really would recommend it to you, it was excellent. So this part of New Zealand is known as the Southland. And this is the war memorial to the people who uh, died in both World War One and just around to the right World War Two from the Southland area. It's really beautifully done. It's really, really lovely, very moving. There's the names of everyone who died overseas. Uh, if I've understood correctly, that's in World War One, or some of them. And there's also a section here at the bottom for people who died in World War II. Names stretch all the way around. Really beautifully done. We are in Queen's Park in the centre of Invercargill. It's a very, very, very big park. A um, couple of square miles more, and so far it's really beautiful. This is uh, a lovely bandstand uh, at the centre of the park, to the memory of the bandsman who fell in the Great War 1914 to 1918 erected by the citizens of Invercargill. How lovely. This whole place is beautiful. It's, it's perfectly manicured, perfectly kept. We just had a lovely cup of coffee in the cafe. Really nice. I'm pleased we came and saw this. It's a beautiful place. So just on the outskirts of Queen's Park here is this really wonderful uh, Bert Munro statue. Him and his 1920s Indian. Um, Bert really helped put Invercargill on the map. And, uh, there's a lovely little plaque here to his memory. Uh, he was born in 1899 and he died in 1978, which Lauren just pointed out is pretty good going for a guy who spent his life going as fast as he possibly could on a motorbike. Um, but there was a quote in, uh, in the movie that we really enjoyed and there it is. You live more in five minutes flat out on a bike like this than most people do in a lifetime. Really nice. Good morning from the Bluff Hill Lookout. So Bluff is that little settlement down there. That is the southernmost settlement anywhere in New Zealand's mainland. We're not quite at the southernmost tip, but we're not far. In the distance over there, you can see um, where the coast follows round. Let me try and zoom in on that for you. Just over there. Um, there's an area sort of just around that way called Slope Point, which is just slightly further south, and we will get there tomorrow. That's the southernmost tip of New Zealand, but I suspect this is probably about the best view that we'll get of this part of the country. Um, straight off in the distance that way is Invercargill. Um, the beach that I ran along, Oretti Beach, is kind of just over there. Um, and then that there is Stewart Island, which we'll have to wait for another day. We are walking to the edge of the bluff, uh, just down from where we parked up at the top of the lookout point. And this walk is really gorgeous. It's going to be a bit steep on the way back up, but the trees are lovely. And it's a really well-formed track. 
very peaceful in here, really nice. Hello from the edge of the bluff. This is as far south as you can go on this bit of the island. It's basically as far south as you can go in New Zealand. It's gorgeous. You've got Stewart Island over there. And check out this view of the cliffs, it's amazing. Water is gorgeous. This is brightly coloured seaweed all over the cliffs. Got the grey of the rocks. I mean, look how pretty that is. That's gorgeous. Now we just have to go uh, all the way back up the top. Never mind. Worth it for this view. Lauren and I agree that. Whilst it's still very beautiful, it's a bit steep on the way back up. I reckon we're about halfway. Whew. Gorgeous bit of forest though. Look at this. We are a very long way from home. 18,958 kilometers to be precise. In fact, it would be much, much, much easier. Well, much quicker, not necessarily easier to go to the South Pole, which is only 4,810 kilometers away. Somewhere over there. Amazing. Okay, next up, the Bluff Maritime Museum. No idea if it's any good. This is really nice. It's a model of Captain James Cook's ship, the Endeavour with which he charted a rough course around the south coast of Australia and also New Zealand. The Bluff Maritime Museum is a small but nice place to learn a bit about the local history, particularly about the shipping and whaling industries which played a key role in the development of the area. A few of the local penguins. Hopefully we'll get to see some at some point. They're very little. And this, uh, this caught my eye. Thank goodness we didn't go diving around the Great Barrier Reef in one of these. This was last worn in uh, 1960. Can you imagine going down to the uh, ocean floor in that? We are at Greenpoint Ship Graveyard. We're just three or four kilometers out of uh, bluff, which you can see in the distance over there. Um, there are about a dozen shipwrecks uh, around here. You can probably see from the colour of the water there are a lot of reefs around here. Many ships have got stranded over the years and whilst a lot of them have been salvaged, a lot were lost and have just been left here. Um, some ships have even been just brought out here to die as it were. Um, there are two there um, and you can see a third off in the distance in the middle over there. Uh, I hope. Um, it's a beautiful boardwalk to get here, nice and flat, which makes a nice change from earlier because we're still a bit tired from that. Um, I suspect at low tide, when the, the water's all the way out, you can see a few more, um, but a beautiful sort of five or ten minute walk and well worth doing. Good afternoon from Omaui Beach. Um, just a little lovely stretch of sand, uh, just five kilometres away from where we were in Bluff, uh, about two and a half kilometres down a, an unsealed road, but totally fine. Um, it is blue skies and sunny. It's not hot, but we are at the arse end of the world and it's not going to be hot, um, but it's very comfortable with a light hoodie. Um, and we are going to sit here, enjoy some sun, read a book, have some popcorn, um, and then we will mosey back to the campsite and chill for the evening. So I think from us, good evening. Over there, you will see a little white beacon. That little white beacon is the most southern tip of New Zealand. We have gone from the very tippy top in Cape Bringa down to the very bottom 
of at least the mainland, not the south most southernmost point on all the islands, but at least the mainland of New Zealand. And I think that's not bad for two poms from London. I think we're doing all right. So here you have it, Slope Point. This is the southernmost point of the South Island of New Zealand. And I think the furthest we could possibly get from our homes in London without going to the Antarctic, which I find astonishing and extraordinary. It's really beautiful here. I like that it's not too dramatic. There's not a lot going on. There's just this little beacon with a light on top just to warn approaching ships and this staggering view off down the coast. But we have made it from the very tippy top of Cape Ringer at the top of the North Island to the bottom of the South Island of the mainland of New Zealand and that's freaking awesome. I officially proclaim myself the most southern human on the South Island of New Zealand. Not bad. Uh, yeah, oh, that's for you, my love. Thank you. Sweetheart, that's for you. It is a very prestigious day. It is the 25th of January, which is this one's birthday. So we have created a cocktail. It's an ambitious word for it, it's but... It's so lovely. Uh, happy birthday, Yael. Yay! Thank nice you. to have you back with us on our little adventure. Woo. And cheers. Cheers. And we will see you guys, you guys in the morning. Good night. Okay, good morning. Uh, we are going to Dunedin today. But a couple of pit stops on the way, starting with however you pronounce that. <laughs> well, here we are. I'm not complaining. It's not rained very much recently, so I think it's, um, it's pretty chill compared to what it could be. But it's still beautiful. Okay, we've driven about another 35 kilometers on from the waterfall. Um, we're at a place called Nugget Point, and we're about to go around to the lighthouse. Um, but along the drive here, there was signs for seals. And if you are very lucky and you look down there in the water, um, you can just spot them. There's no chance you'll see it on the, uh, on the video, but I've managed to get one on a photo, which I'll drop in here. These views keep getting better and better and better. This is just so dramatic in so many ways. The waves are huge, there's seals playing in the water. The cliffs are towering. It's just gorgeous. Amazing place. Nugget point. And now we'll go up to the lighthouse for a little look. This is one of the most beautiful, unique coastal landscapes I've ever seen. It's just gorgeous. Got the cliffs off this way. Stretching off down the coast. Little lighthouse here to warn approaching sailors of the rocks nearby and just that view off in the distance there is like an oil painting. But this is jaw-dropping. I've never seen anything like this before. There's seals everywhere, playing in the water, and it's just brilliant. How about this is a spot for lunch? Gorgeous. You can just see the lighthouse on the top of the cliff over there. After lunch, we cruised into Dunedin and found a place to park up for the night. We went into town for a couple of drinks before heading to the stadium. Red Hot Chili Peppers! Let's go! Post Malone got the crowds warmed up, the sun started to set, and just a few nights after leaving Arrowtown, Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Watching the Chili Peppers play in Dunedin, some 18,000 kilometres from our home in London, was a surreal experience. They were one of the defining bands of my teenage years, and I'd always wanted to see them live. We bought the tickets a few months earlier, but after the drenching we'd had on the North Island, we'd very nearly abandoned our time in New Zealand altogether. The dream of seeing this show had kept us going, and I felt incredibly grateful to be there. Thank you so much for watching, and we hope you've enjoyed this one. Anthony, Flea, John and Chad will play us out.